In this video, I will be talking about histopathological aspects of dental caries. First, let us come to the zones of enamel caries. The enamel caries is divided into four zones. The first zone is the deepest zone and is known as the translucent zone. It represents the advancing front of the enamel lesion. When it is perfused with quinolone solution, it gives a structureless appearance when examined under polarized light and that is why it gives a translucent appearance. The next zone is the dark zone which does not transmit polarized light when perfused with quinolone solution because it has very fine air filled or vapor filled pores that make this region opaque. In this region, there is a loss of crystalline structure which is suggestive of the process of demineralization and remineralization. The third zone is the largest zone and it is the body of the lesion. It has the largest pore volume of 5 to 25 percent. You can see evidence of demineralization and striae of residues are present which shows that the organic component is still intact while the mineral resolution is taking place. There may be bacteria present in this zone. The last zone is the surface zone which is intact and relatively unaffected by the caries attack. It has a very low pore volume and the radiograph shows a radio opacity comparable to unaffected adjacent enamel. This surface enamel is hypermineralized and has a greater concentration of fluoride ion than the immediately subjacent enamel. These are the four zones of enamel caries. Next, we come to dentinal caries. The dentinal caries proceeds through three changes. First is the inorganic component is demineralized by weak acid. And then there is degeneration and dissolution of the organic material of collagen uh, present in the dentin. And finally, there is loss of structural integrity followed by invasion of bacteria. There are five zones of dentinal caries. The deepest zone is the normal dentin. Here, the odontoblastic processes are smoothed within the dentinal tubules. And there is normal cross-banding of collagen and normal dense appetite crystals. This is a bacteria-free zone. The second zone is the zone of dentinal sclerosis or subtransparent dentin. In this case, there is some demineralization of intertubular dentin happening. There is initial formation of fine crystals, which can be seen in the tubule lumen. Again, the collagen cross-linking is intact and there are no bacteria which are present in this zone. The third zone is the zone of decalcification or transparent dentin. Here, there is obvious decalcification resulting in dentin being softer than the normal dentin. And there is a further loss of mineral from the intertubular dentin. However, again in this region, the collagen cross-linking remains intact. Therefore, this zone can be remineralized. Also, bacteria are absent. The fourth zone is the zone of bacterial invasion and is characterized by turbid dentin. There is widening and distortion of the dentinal tubules. A lot of bacteria are present and collagen is irreversibly denatured. Since this collagen is irreversibly denatured by losing the cross-linking, it cannot be remineralized. Therefore, this turbid dentin must be removed. This is also one component of the infected dentin. 
the top most zone is the zone of decomposed dentin or infected dentin this is steaming with bacteria and there is no recognizable structure to the dentin there is no collagen or mineral which can be discerned so the zone 4 and zone 5 dentins must be removed because there is irreversible denaturation of collagen and there is bacteria which are present one important short note question and viva question which can be asked are differences between affected and infected dentin infected dentin is the soft demineralized dentin invaded with bacteria whereas there are no bacteria present in affected dentin so it is demineralized infected dentin can be seen as a soft leathery tissue it can be flaked easily and removed with the help of a sharp spoon excavator affected dentin though soft in nature does not flake easily and need not be removed the collagen present in infected dentin is irreversibly denatured and there is loss of cross linking therefore it cannot be remineralized whereas the affected dentin still retains the collagen cross linking and hence it can be remineralized and when caries excavation is being done it should be retained infected dentin can be detected with the help of caries detecting dye which stain the uh, denatured collagen whereas affected dentin will not be stained by dyes and needs to be left behind 